No Doubt is 135 to beat. I'm K Fox. And you know what? I'm not even going to lie. I need you to pronounce, pronounce your name, name please. <laughs> Yo, all right. X, 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 Tentacion. Okay. So what do, what do you want me to call you? Just call me X. X or Young Dagger Dick. <laughs> young, you want me to call you Young Dagger young Dick? Young Dagger Dick. <laughs> you, you want me to say and call you Young Dagger Dick? Young Dagger Dick. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I will call you X. Um, what does that mean? Young Dagger Dick or X? I could, I could imagine what Young Dagger Dick means. Uh, X. All right. So X, 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 Tentacion means unknown temptation. Um, as far as the, the X, the significance of the X, for some time, the X was the only unknown numeral to me. So it was... Uh, it played as like it's like being John like like John Doe. You get what I'm saying? John Doe stands for unknown. So okay, X is the variable, like the wild card. And unknown. So temptation is uh I mean tentacion is temptation in Latin. So I actually just pushed the two together in unknown temptation because I feel as if that's what my life revolves around. But why three X's? Um, I, I don't really know, and to be honest, like it just just came to me, I guess. Okay, and you where did you think of this name? Like you just said. I was in boot camp, and I used to jack off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm talking about I was watching blue movie after blue movie and like nigga my grandma wouldn't let me use the bathroom no more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you were getting off in your grandma's house? In you know, my grandma's bathroom. <laughs> oh my god. And that's not you... grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma, do you know this? <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> my lord. So you come up with this name. I'm going to call you X, but it's XXX yeah. Tentacion. Tentacion. Are you, do you have, um, are you Latin or what, what's, um, are you no, Spanish? What's your background? I'm, I'm actually, there's a, there's a bit of confusion because I've gotten uh, from my great grandmother that I'm Egyptian, but there's a switch. I'm actually Syrian. So I'm Jamaican, Syrian, there's a hint of Indian, and then uh, like Italian. So I guess I'm a mutt. You know what you should do? I actually did um, Ancestry, you know, yeah. the DNA. You can, and then you just kind of spit in a little a vowel thing, you yeah. send it back, and then you they break it down for you, which you really are. Work? Yeah, it works. I know what I am. I thought, I, like, last time I went on Ancestry, it was like a family tree. I tried to mess No, up don't do the family. You just want to know who you are. What's your D, your own personal DNA makeup? You can come back with, like, a whole culture. Yep. They they email you your results That's back. That's scary. <laughs> Why is it scary? I think it's interesting. I, I don't want them knowing that much about it, nigga. <laughs> I'm good off that. <laughs> but you knowing that about you. So, um, this is a big moment for you. You're literally just getting out of jail. Yeah. Literally, like, probably, like, two days ago. Okay. I, I've just been quiet. That's really? Funny. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it, it's a lot bigger than it was before. And, I, I mean, I was going to plan to do something, but it, it ended up just... Do like, something like what? I was going to do, like, a challenge. I was going to... Well, I'm still going to do the challenge. I just got to be more creative now because I was going to get out and actually buy a casket and pretend to come from the dead. Oh, my God. And just say viral into the camera. But I Okay, mean, whose idea was that? You thought of this? Uh, yeah. I mean, for as far as everything, as far as the creativity of everything that I do, it all comes from me. Okay. But why the casket? That seems so morbid. Because I got a dead tattooed on my hand. I feel like I'm dead. <laughs> but you're, dead but you're not. You're... I'm alive, but I'm dead. <laughs> why do you say that? You feel like there's a part of you that died? or? Yeah. yeah. Like, which part would that be? Uh, I mean, as far as, I, I mean, I have a lot of compassion for the things that I do in my life. But as far as um, just like everything that goes on around me, I feel like I'm I become very pessimistic. Like uh, what? Like what have you seen? Like take us into your your I mean, life, your journey. My, situ- my current situation, just like I spent nine months in, in jail by myself for for some time, like away from my the people I love. Or to like I was just I was stuck, and because I fell in love with the wrong person. And like like even like. Uh, it's just, it was a fucked up situation. I fell in love with the wrong person. I, I mean, I, I tried to give them the world. And due to the, to, I don't want to blame it on the career. It may just be that I'm stupid as a person. It may just be to, to, to my negligence or uh, karma catching up to me. But just due to the fact that I, obviously I must not have been enough, a lot of shit took place. So it was a, it was a explosive relationship. And Definitely so was. is that why you were in jail? Or did that, did that have anything to do um, with why you got locked up? Or do you? Initially, uh, the charges that were pending against me. Uh, then I mean they're not true. The fucked up part is it's not true. Um, I'm on probation for it, so I can't say too much because they could violate me whenever they want. And I don't want to go to prison. Um, but I mean the, the the to to be very descriptive as to the the situation that the case the at the situation of the case. I mean they had no evidence from the very beginning, so I was sitting on no evidence just due to the fact that I violated pretrial, which is ankle monitor pretrial release. 
um, it made everything 10 times harder for me. And my ex knew that, and she fucked me over on purpose. Like, I always told her, like, yo, I, I can't get into no shit, you know what I'm saying, or else I, I might be going back for life. Because I have PBL charges. PBO? PBL means punishable by life. Okay. Therefore, like, if you violate on a, uh, on a PBO probation, they can give you whatever the fuck they want to. If you're found guilty on that violation. So if I if I so so much as simply drive down the street with a suspended license, or if they really want to fuck me over, like get a speeding ticket, you get what I'm saying? They could violate me, and I'll be going to like prison for a very very long time. There's, wow, it's seven years minimum. They have to give me seven years out the gate. Wow, and how old are you? I'm 19. You're only 19, yeah. and all of this is going on. Yeah. So do you still speak to your ex, or what's the situation? Do you guys have children together, or no? It was it was just more or less like when you. Like, I'm just saying this to you as a person, not even like, not not even on no interview shit. Like when you feel, when you you know what it feels like to feel for somebody, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And when you have this genuine, genuine feeling that you get from somebody, and you get make that person your source of happiness, obviously it becomes like they they become your drug. You know what I'm saying? This girl became like my drug. She must have had that good, good, huh? It, it wasn't even a pussy, dog. What was it? But what? What? Hey, tell me. She was top of the nigga good, dog. Okay, hey, so she had your mental, too. <laughs> so the mental was there, everything. It was, it was mentally, I, it may have just been myself, because I, I wasn't enough for myself at that point in time. Like, like, so she fed something in you that you felt like you were missing. She filled the void. There was always, there will be and always was a void in my heart. And it was just due to the fact that I didn't have my mom for, for a, a long amount of time. And my mom was out there trying to hustle, get her money up, you feel me? And and she was doing everything she could. And I, like, and I ain't even from the dub my mom. Like, I love my mom to death. That's my, that's my, that's the apple in my eye. I, I'll take a bullet from my mom any day. You take a bullet from my mom right now, no question. No questions asked. But it was just, at the time when she was younger, my mom was 17, 18 with a baby. And I mean, her, her, her nigga not paying her no mind. She ain't have nobody around, you feel me? So she was just hustling, trying to get out of mud. She was passing me hand to uh, hand and shit. So it was like So you at grandma house, you grandma, were, yeah. I, I initially it wasn't even just that, like mm-hmm. she like to friends and shit, you know what I'm saying? Our babysitters and like distant family and shit like that. It wasn't nothing really too close. So I grew up having to self soothe, but imagine having to self soothe and not doing it and just being like mentally mentally ill from the very beginning and just being depressed from the very beginning. Mm. And I mean and I mean this like and I'm saying this like from my heart, like that's really what it was. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. And so now that you have all this going on, the ex is dealing with you, with you and, well, you know. she's not. I just want to say that. She's not. So she's. <laughs> bitch, I'm fire, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, so what, what, did you go to school? Like, yeah. were you in the streets? Like, oh, I don't, I don't want to say I was in the streets because there's some niggas out there really, really living that shit. You feel me? We're like, really, really, really living that life. I'm not living that life. I mean, I'm going. I'm going to fight a nigga. I'm. I'm going to fight a nigga. I, if I got to poke you, I'm going to poke you. I was never one to shoot at people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm more likely to. I'm going to fight you, and if you small, I'm going to throw the hands with you. If you too big, I know you're going to whoop me. I'm going to stab you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was, my bro, I'm keeping the blood off. Mm-hmm. If you too big, I'm going to stab you. And that's how I was on a like a, on a on a on an aggressive aspect. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. as, as far as like slinging dope and shit like that, I never. I only sold like one bag of weed ever in my life. Like two bags of weed ever okay. in my life. So, but you were in school or you just wasn't about far, that life? As far as school, I went to school till sophomore year. I actually went to Piper High School in Sunrise. Um, and you're from Florida originally? Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, yeah, I'm from Florida. Um, what part? D side. Okay. Lot of Hill. <laughs> Lot of Hill. <laughs> hey, shout out to my city, man. But, I mean, um, as, far as, as far as going to school, I mean, I was in school till sophomore year. And I just knew, like, like I said, I was already depressed. So, I would go to school, go to sleep, and, like, wasn't really doing anything. And I felt like... It wasn't mentally doing anything for me. Like you like, didn't feel challenged. It, not even just not even just challenged. Like I knew it was fake. Like even like all right, let's st- like realistically, as the parents that send their their kids to school, they don't even know what their children are studying. Mm. Like for one, about the fact that they say that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. Native Americans were already here. That's clear as day. If you really do, but you, they can't you, still be teaching kids that now. They still are. No, it's, it's not altered. No, they have not altered. Like that it. can't be happening. I, I hope they've altered it because no. it was not altered at my. Like, when I was in school, that's what they were saying to us. Wow. Like, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Like, it, I mean, as far as as far as the the information they solicit, mm-hmm. it's 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 all 
They give us, they feed us bits and pieces. I mean, I could talk about that shit all day. That's yeah. the type of shit I like to talk about. So you, know? you were just kind of over it. I, was, like. I, I, just, I felt like it was stupid. Mm -hmm. Anything that did not feed my happiness or make me remotely happy, took, anything that took away the freedom of my mental or took away that, that con made my thoughts conform, I found irrelevant and I felt like it would not benefit me at all, nor has it. Anything, everything that I've applied my mind to and that I really attracted mentally has come to me. Anything that I did not want has not worked out. So then where, at what point did the music come into play into your life? Uh, I, bro, like, I mean, when I was like 15 years old, I would play with it. I would play with it. I, I mean, I was, like, I was listening to, 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 I mean, all the young niggas of that, of that generation. I was listening to Wayne. I was listening to Drake. I was listening to, to I mean, the whole, the whole Young Money, you feel me? Young, when Young Money was popping, but I was weird. I used to listen to rock. Like, well, I, that's not even weird. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I was, I was diverse. I was, I was mentally capable of doing yeah. stuff like that. Um, I was listening to like the Fray, Papa Rose, like different rock bands. You know what I'm saying? I was always strange. And then I go from that to listening to to classic. And like, I was weird. You I should. Ex that's great yeah. that you know different genres and different sounds that you like because that's what music. That's hip hop. Yeah. I was, you know I, what I mean? You shouldn't just pigeonhole yourself into one thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, I was weird with that shit. As far as like what really made me start is. I never knew what I wanted to do, and I didn't want anything that took away from my freedom. I wasn't with a nine to five. I I only done one job, and I was a sales broker because I knew how to run my mouth. You feel a me? sales broker for what? Uh, uh, energy solutions. Uh, it was a. It was. I what was, does that mean? I was a fucking uh, electricity salesman. Oh, okay. Literally, and I lasted like. <laughs> so you knocked week. on people's doors and. Well, no, like, not even, not even. So no, they came was, to you? No, I was. It was more of like we would get on the phone, call the corporate office, talk to the like. We try and get the corporate office to switch from whoever their electricity. Okay, so was. let's role play. So you're calling me. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jose Onfori from uh, Energy Solutions. How are you doing today? I'm good. Um, can I help you? Uh, I'm calling from Energy Solutions because we're doing a brief survey in your uh, area. Uh, they're saying that you are actually paying more for your electricity bill than you should be. Are you aware of that? You know, you're pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a beast. You know how to switch the roles up. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, was, I was good at it, but like I said, anything that made me feel like a slave, I wasn't with it. We, I've, I, we've, our, our skin color has long evolved from that. You know what I'm saying? And now it's bigger than just our skin color. That's why I want people to also see. It's an economic war right it, now. Not even just that. Like mentally, the, it, the slavery is not physical anymore. It's mental. Mm -hmm. As far as the new world order has come in the shape of elect electronics. You know what I'm saying? Taking away your mind from what you want to apply it to. The mind is but a magnet to what you want. You know what I'm saying? The law of attraction, like mm -hmm. all the laws of the universe. I studied all the laws of the universe. You know what I'm saying? And I fully apply that. So, so was there someone in your life that introduced you to that or just something you just kind of gravitated I, I, towards? I, I, I was born with the knowing of it. It was, hmm. it was strange. That's why I felt like I was, I felt like I knew. Like I believe, like I'm, I'm a really weird, weird, weird kid. I believe in past lives and future lives. I believe in the karmic cycle. I believe you will re repeat this life until you get it right. Hmm. I believe until you align the karmic cycle, you, Nothing else matters. Okay. Like so, actual projection and weird stuff like that. Hmm. And you incorporate that in your music? Yes. To some to some degree, yes. Because I've heard from some people that it's a little distorted. Like the like the way that it's recorded is distorted. Very old That's together. on purpose. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Why? It's raw. It's raw, and, and, and it don't sound like anybody else. And if it don't sound like anybody else, then it sound like me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to. Find, I ain't trying to sound like, 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 bro. Like, let's let's keep it blood raw. Like. The niggas at the top of the industry right now, everybody's trying to sound like them. Everybody. Literally. Every single person that, that jumps into music, they're like, all right, how can I sound like this? This is the sound I want. You know what I'm saying? I came out literally trying to, to change that. And I felt like it was the most innovative thing I could have done for my generation. I'm not going to say I'm, I'm some super, super mastermind, but as far as like music-wise, I feel like I, I, out of my generation or my millennial, for for for, for that matter, that I've, I I'm one of the most innovative youth to this day. So how did that come to be? So because you know when you look online, they yeah. say you have a cult following. Yes, so it's kind of like wow, a cult following. How do how do people just gravitate towards you? Because I love these kids. So it was the music, but do you think your rap sheet had anything to do with that, or was it simply the music? The depression, the depression is real. What is real will prosper. I always say that. That's that's what I live by. What is real will prosper. I love these kids, mm -hmm. and I know what it feels like to be alone. I got a lone tattooed on the left side of my face. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be alone, and I mean that. Like I know what it feels like to wake up somewhere where you're not supposed to be, 
around people you're not supposed to be around and not and be around a, you could be around a million people just like me you or or bro or, or or my manager we could be around a million people and still be alone i know what that felt i knew what that felt like and i know what it felt like being on the verge of wanting to end it all but being too pussy to do it i was i was too pussy to to, to end my life so mm. i knew that feeling and i wanted to comfort anybody cuz i found a way out through the music no i, I think to, that is brave to stand up and live your life definitely yeah definitely i mean it, it it, it 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 it's 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 a double it's a double jeopardy it, 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 it's a double edged sword. I mean, I get it, but I think that it's brave when you choose when you, not when you to. Choose, when, yeah, you exactly. to when you choose life, yeah. When you choose, pain, pain, pain is everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you choose to suffer through the pain, you strong. But so, so the music is your outlet. I yeah. want to clear. I want you to clarify something for me. Yeah. What's the situation between you and Drake? Do you guys have beef? Are you guys cool? Like, what what's the situation? <laughs> What's going? What's uh, going on? All right, I'm gonna keep you. I'm gonna, I, I, I was waiting on this. Talk to me. I was waiting for you at the door. Yes. <laughs> uh, me <All> too. Right. <laughs> all right. So look. Um, the nigga hit up. I'm. I'm like. Like I ain't even on that snitching that shit. Keep a blood raw. Keep I, a blood raw. I, I, I got to cause like I don't want nobody coming at me crazy. You feel me? Like 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 I saw it, bro. You feel me? Like I wasn't like I was in the wrong. Bro, I hit up a DJ that I fought with. Who I did? Ain't... Drake. Okay. Drake hit up a DJ that I fought with. You feel me? And and bro told me, um, he was like, "Yo, the nigga Drake watched your interview. He said he fuck with you, and he fuck with your partner Ski Mask. He's like, "Yo, he saying he go call your manager within the next few days." Okay. So I'm I'm bro, I'm amped up, nigga. I fuck with Drake. Yeah. You know, for me, Drake a genius. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm d- despite despite me disrespecting him as a man because I can't respect him as a man. I respect that nigga career. That's yeah. a goat. Okay. That's a goat. So you he, know how to differentiate yeah, the two? I know. I, Corporately, that nigga is the goat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I knew what I was doing when I said what I said, and I knew how to approach him because I know where he can't beat me at. Okay, you get what I'm saying. So initially, he was supposed to contact one of my managers, so he doesn't do it. That same fucking week, bro, I go on to. Bro, well, I can't go on to the obviously because I'm locked up. But yeah, I'm, I'm on the securest phone. You feel me? That's crazy. When you in jail, people checking for you. The- the cult following is like, yo, what's good? You still buzzing in these streets. And what were you thinking in your mind when you can't access it? Like, like that must be a crazy feeling. I, like I said, I was I was really, really, really big on on being inside of my mind. Yeah. Like astral projection and, and meditation and things of that sort. So it was never, it, w- it was a problem because it was a problem for the reason that I wanted to be with my family and the people I love. You know what I'm saying? And, and I wanted to be able to express that. I wanted to be able to feed off the energy of my family. Now, as far as anything that revolved around my career, mm-hmm. I knew it could wait. Okay, got I, it. I know what you feel me like. It's it's the difference between being an artist and being a rapper. Yeah. Some of these niggas could hop on the hop on the radio and be gone the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they could they could try and be on the top, but they can't maintain it. I can maintain. Just like got it. just like DJ DJ Khaled said. You feel me? Mm-hmm. He he made for this shit. I'm made for this shit. So you in jail? He's supposed to contact your manager and yeah. then. What happened? He, he, I mean, he, he dropped the fucking video, a preview of that shit in Amsterdam with some with some, with some nigga from uh, from the UK. You know what I'm saying? He dropped the, he dropped the video. I was talking to um I was talking to my girl at the time, not not the same bitch that got me arrested, different girl. Okay. I was talking to her at the time, and she was like, "Yo, listen to no, actually, fuck that. It was my dog Chris. I was on the phone with my dog Chris. He was like, "Yo, you gotta listen to this shit. This nigga Drake a fuck nigga. That's what exactly what he said. He said this nigga Drake a fuck nigga. You gotta listen to this shit." So he plays this shit. I hear da 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 my da. I'm like, what the fuck? As soon as it started, like I knew, I knew he was getting that. And the funny thing is, we didn't discover it. The fan, like you said, the fans, because the, they're, they're they're so cold. Like it's like, I got a piece of the internet. You feel me? So they were saying that Drake was biting your style. <sighs> That's what the fans were saying. Yeah. Uh, flow, hell yeah, bro. You could you could take his verse. Like they did a mashup. They put his verse on my song. And they, the cadence is literally just at the same tempo. You, it, it's not offbeat at all. And you can, if you listen to my song and then you listen to the bro song, like you, you could, bro, we, we all Let's not see. dumb. You, yeah, go. Isn't the mashup on your Instagram page? No, that's not. Is, on that's my not the, okay. Where is it? Where, where can we find it? Um, you can just look up XXX Tentacion Drake. Tentacion Drake. Just, or just look up Drake mashup <laughs> or something. So now, where do you guys stand? Like, what's good now? I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. As oh. a, as a, as a, no, I'm keeping a blood roll. I, I still think Drake a fuck nigga. Like, I think he, he's he's not a man. I think he's a, a bitch. That's a bitch move. Especially when I was in jail facing facing life, bro. You get what I'm saying? If Drake would have came to my, my barn hearing, you know what I'm saying? That would have made my fucking day. 
if he if he would have showed that he he's a hospitable person and that he's really in this shit for the culture, rather than being a fuck nigga taking my shit, running off with it, and then putting it on his album, then he would have got my kudos. He would have got my respect. I would have I would have let him hop on the remix, take a hundred percent royalty rate. I would have done it because mm. I know I know I can maintain. You get what I'm saying? That I would have appreciated him for being a real nigga, a Drake not a real nigga. So. Anything now, like moving forward, it happened. You can't take it back. I'm, I'm gonna make the world hate me. I'm gonna make the world hate me. I'm gonna be like, I'm, I'm gonna be the super villain. I'm, I'm gonna make this whole thing crumble. People like the villains. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I definitely agree. They definitely do. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ruin everything for everybody. I'm talking about. I'm finna, I'm finna shit so hard. Like, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need moist toilets on my right hand every day. I'm, I'm finna shit hard. So no more jail. That's clear. No, I'm, I'm good. You're out. You good. As long as, as long as they don't set me up, but they set niggas up all the time. I, I feel like they set Kodak up. If you ask me. Oh, you see my shirt? It, free Kodak. Yeah, <laughs> free Kodak. Hey, shout out to Paul Ryan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I think they set him up. If you ask me, because when I was on, when I was on, I was on. See, the fucked up thing is, it don't matter how you get out. If they got a hold on you, they trying to violate you. Because when I was on pretrial, remind you, they say it's not it's innocent before proven guilty. But they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me out free. First mm-hmm, of all, and mm-hmm. I had bond. You know what I'm saying? They put an ankle monitor on me. Mm. I would get a call from my my pretrial officer, and she'd be like, "Oh, your ankle monitor said you were here at this time because they shit used to glitch because I was on the 12th floor at FIU, so it used to glitch out and say I was some down the street or some shit. Wow. I never left my house. So wow. she'll call me, bro. Call me and be like, "Oh, you're gonna go back to jail for a very long time if you don't get right there." I'm, I'm like telling her, "I'm like, yo, I, I didn't leave my house. If the only time I left my house was to get pizza downstairs. You know what I'm saying?" They don't give a fuck. You gotta realize these people get touched for this shit. That's crazy. And they violating people's due processes. I, well, we know what that's about. We we know what the system is not made yeah. for people to succeed. <laughs> you I, know what I'm saying? I just want to be one of the people to to actually give power to that shit, or just to like let people like nobody gonna feel it till they end up in that situation. Hey, not, he not gonna feel it unless his brother or his mom end up in jail. You feel me? He not gonna feel it unless your daughter or somebody end up in jail. Nobody gonna feel it till they end up. But but, but I mean like. It's sick. It's sick. They don't feed you real meat. They're not giving you the right nutrition. They put in chlorine mm. in, the, in, the, in the showers. It's, they got bleach soaps. Like, bro, the shit is sick. Like, bro, there's there's a shit called, they, they call Jim Jones. You pour it in, in, they drink it. You drink it, like, every day. What is that? It's a, it's like a juice. It's like a, like a I guess, a fake juice. Like, they put the powder in the, in the water, and you drink. It's called Jim Jones. If you pour this shit on the paint, it melts the paint, and they're making us drink this shit. If you pour it on, I kid you not, I'm not talking about my, you pour this shit on the paint, it eats away at the paint. Well, I heard that they were giving um, soldiers something like that to suppress their sex, their sexual appetite. Yo, that's funny because I was going to say that, but I was just trying to dive into it. That's what they said, but it was a rumor. They're like, oh, if you drink Jim Jones, your dick can't stand up. You feel me? But I wasn't trying to They giving y'all that. Jim Jones, yo. I wasn't drinking that shit. I'm water-fied. I'm, <laughs> you feel me? I'm drinking water. Damn. <laughs> Whoa. Well, we've we've kind of been everywhere. So, what's next with the music? Um, uh, I got an album out coming out called Seventeen, a mixtape called I Need Jesus, the mixtape, and then one more called uh, Revenge. And um, I mean, as far as as far as myself as a, a artist, I want to be able to uh, break all barriers. And I mean, as far as for the underground, I'm giving uh, independent artists opportunities to actually shine. Like, I mean, I repost I repost people's uh th- uh shit on my on my SoundCloud. Like the cheap, like I'll charge them like two hundred dollars. You feel me? Two hundred, three hundred dollars. I'll repost your shit on my shit for a whole day, and you blow up. You get like twelve thousand within a day. You know what I'm saying? Twelve thousand, mm-hmm. thirteen thousand. So I'm doing that for people to give, to take the power away from the industry and give it to the the individual. And if you if music is your calling, you'll see it because then people will naturally gravitate towards you. So I'm trying to do that. I mean, I'm trying to give back to everybody because when my, when me and my mom ain't have it, you feel me? It was never like dead broke, but when we ain't have it, I knew what it felt like to be hungry. You feel me? So I'm trying to like, I think uh, I actually got the idea from it was either you guys or, or another station, but they. It was they, definitely uh, us. All right. What, <laughs> <laughs> my fault. <laughs> us. All right. So yeah, where you, um, y'all would basically like go buy groceries and fill up somebody's fridge. Yeah. Fill your fridge. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm doing that. I'm going to do that same shit. Cause I, I mean, when I say y'all inspired me with that shit, like I would have never thought about something like that. Oh, wow. So once a month, uh, once or twice a month, you feel what I'm saying? I'm going to pick at least like two to three people. And take them to fill up their fridge, and and I'm, I'm I'm just trying to give back, bro. I'm not I'm not selfish. That's good, good for you. Um, X AKA Dagger Dick. Dagger Dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like I like I like her. <laughs> well, let's talk since we talked about how you got your the X name. 
Talk to me about Dagger Dick then. I'll give you that platform. Uh, <laughs> all right. This is for the ladies. So <laughs> I, I go at least like a good like eight or nine, but I have no girth like at all. Oh, like, my God. Like, I got like a, a E.T. dick. Like my, it's like E.T. finger. Like it's like super, super skinny, but long. So I can fuck your walls up. You feel me? Like, like poke them, but it, it's no friction in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Oh, Lord have you mercy. Feel me? A, a player don't lie, so I'm gonna keep it blood raw. Okay, if so you got the length, but not the girth. I got the length, but no girth. Okay, but everything else, the tongue game is. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm fine with you. <laughs> I'm just saying, ladies want to know. Listen, Ask the questions, ladies want to know. I I like to I like to to please a woman more than I like to be pleased myself. I'm a pleaser. Rather than that's you're 19, so that's a good start. I'm very so, good no, start, I, young I've man. Only, I've only had sex with one girl and not made her come. Only one. Wait, what? What'd you I've, say? I've only had sex with one woman and not made her. In your life? Yeah. Well, with, and not made her. Oh, I'm, and not. I thought you meant. I, I don't hit at least like a good. Oh my! We don't need to know the count. <laughs> I can't count them on my hands. No, we don't need to know the count. <laughs> but okay, all right. So that's a note for you guys. Yeah. For the future. Okay. Well, I think we've covered covered a lot of bases, and you just got to stay out of trouble, stay focused. We rooting for you. There's a lot of these, you know, kids that are getting these opportunities and getting locked up, and it's like a waste, and it's really sad. So. I want to see you make it, you know? I want to see you live those dreams, whatever you have in your mind. Go for it. Give back. Be the super villain, the hero, everything you want to be. Just stay out of jail, please. I appreciate you. All right? I don't want to sound preachy, but no, it's I mean, real. I, I'm talking about every time it's said to me, it, like, it, I, you're saying what I need to hear, you feel me? You I mean, look, Kodak no. Black, well, um, well, that's, that's you know what I'm saying, Shmurda, you know what I'm saying, Bobby Shmurda. seven for his dog. Like, yo, it's, 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 it was happening consecutive. It's crazy. Ross on house arrest, ankle like it's just like yo, come on. If I say if I say bro punched me, but he he punched me in my shit with no evidence, it don't matter. I go to the police, I say he punched me in my shit. They coming to get him. Mm -hmm. All all all, all I got to do is have like a little bit of a scar on my face. They mm -hmm. coming to, they coming to get bro. Yeah, and he gonna sit for a good five months unless you got ten bands or twenty bands to pay lawyers. Mm -hmm. And it's just, even some of the lawyers don't give a fuck. But luckily, I had a good ass lawyer um named Robert Trackman. Go hit my dog up. You feel me? Go get him if he if he want to. But Robert Trackman, and phenomenal guy. Um, he's actually going through my my condolences to him. He's going through something right now. Um, phenomenal guy helped me out. You know what I'm saying? Because I had another lawyer on my case for like seven months, like five, like six, six, seven months. And bro was just sitting. You feel me? He yeah, wasn't trying to help me. Mm -hmm. So Trackman, Trackman came out of nowhere. You feel me? Because uh, thank God for my manager. Um, he came out. He came out, helped me, got me out on probation. Even though I was, you feel me? I'm not. I'm not guilty, but. I, I wanted to get out. I wanted to be with my mom, help my mom out. You feel mm -hmm. me? So I took the plea. And and, and even when you take the plea, that's even a setup because that follows you for life. That's the setup right there. I got I got withheld judification though. So okay. I'm not even a convicted felon. That's okay. Yeah. But well, good I, for if you. I, if I fuck up, I am though. Okay. Well, don't fuck up. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll try. Thank you, X X Extension. Just call me Young Dex. Did I do that right? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna call you X. <laughs> The ladies can call you the other ladies, the younger ladies can call you something else. I don't know about the other thing, but thank you for coming through and sure. being so vulnerable and open. And in all honesty, this is—I mean, the honor is all mine. I, 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 like this is amazing. This is, is is a great opportunity, and I'm very grateful to even be in your presence as well as his, and just to be able to to even do this. Like, it's not a lot of niggas that make it out the hood. It's not a lot of people that even get to live out their dreams. So I'm definitely, and I mean, I'm saying this again mm -hmm. from me to you. I'm definitely very, very, very thankful. You're welcome. And shout out to 103 Father Beat. Shout out to Revenge. Um, uh, fuck and Drake. Then we're going to get the um, interview with another one line. On shout out to my line. mom. Shout out to Robert Trackman. And um, thank you to everybody that supported me throughout this experience. And 33. I am out of jail.